All right, it is the Michigan Football Report. I am your host, James Yarder. Michigan has won the Big Ten title. Back-to-back -back Big Ten championships for the Wolverines. I'm here from uh, home studio, Yoder. I uh, didn't go to the office here. You know, it's uh, past midnight Eastern on uh, the East Coast, but I will be back tomorrow. Folks, Michigan outscored uh, Purdue 29-9 to in the second half of this game. Um, kind of like the whole season, right? Michigan jerked around a little bit, didn't look great at points in the first half. Certainly, Illinois' pass game uh, gave Michigan all they could handle. And when it came down to it, Michigan did what they did best in the second half, which was run the ball with Diamond Edwards. Uh, obviously, Blake Corum not playing and play damn good defense, especially damn good um, red zone defense for the uh, the majority of this game, but especially in the second half. Folks, Michigan is 13-0 for the first time in program history. So if that makes you excited like it does me, give me a 13 down in the comments. Go ahead and type 13 down below. Uh, let me know if you're uh, you're pumped up for a 13-0 Michigan football team. And we'll head to the college football playoffs. And we'll know who they're playing tomorrow, whether it's Ohio State, whether it's TCU. Hell, I mean, some people are saying Alabama. I certainly highly doubt it will be uh, the Crimson Tide, but I think Alabama or, or Ohio State or TCU. I think it's almost certainly to be TCU, but let me know what uh, you know. You guys think with the 13. Type 13 down in the comments. We'll ask you more about the CFP later on in the show. Speaking of the CFP, tomorrow morning, I'll be at the office. Full studio support, live show, Michigan Football Report live for the final CFP Top 25 and the college football semifinal uh, matchups. Michigan will be number two. Georgia will be number one. The only intrigue is whether Ohio State will be number three or four, or TCU three or four, and who Michigan will face in the college football playoff. The Wolverines are guaranteed to go out to uh, Arizona, to Glendale, uh, to play in the Fiesta Bowl. So make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel. All right, some things about this game. All right, Will Johnson has arrived. The player of the game tonight, uh, lockdown defense pretty much all day, and Purdue is passing the ball very, very well. But Will Johnson was finally put on their best receiver, and when it counted, he made big time plays throughout this game. Two interceptions for the freshman, who may at this point be Michigan's best defensive player on the team. And the one thing that was exciting tonight was if you looked at what happened with this program, this team tonight, the best players in Maybe I'm taking a little bit of credit away from the offensive and defensive line. Okay, I'll admit that it might be. But the best players on this team were freshmen and sophomore who will be back next year. Most may even be back in two years. J.J. McCarthy, sophomore. Diamond Edwards, sophomore. Colson Loveland, freshman. Um, Mason Graham, he didn't have a great – you know, I didn't hear much of him uh, this game. I'll look back uh, at what he did. Let me just kind of look at the uh, the stats here. Did Mason Graham really do anything? I don't even know. But um, – uh, Will Johnson, of course, is a true freshman. How about uh, Junior Colson, true sophomore? He had himself 15 tackles. So the best players on this roster tonight were freshmen and sophomore. Diamond Edwards, folks, though, um, look, he had himself a hell of a game. He had that long run early on. He had that touchdown run where he literally – Barreled off like seven, six, seven defenders, broke six tackles on that play. And the Michigan football team did what they did against Ohio State, did what they did many games this season, which was absolutely dominate in the second half. Michigan 180 yards rushing in the second half. Uh, as a team, though, for the game, Michigan uh, 225 yards rushing. So 45 yards rushing in the first half, 180 in the second half to Purdue's 90. Now, Purdue did have 366 yards passing to Michigan's 166, and the Boilermakers outgained uh, Michigan 456 to 386 on the day. But nevertheless, some of those were cheap yards from Purdue, but many of them were, and uh, and that might have been the difference uh, uh, in a much closer game than it probably should have been was Purdue's ability to uh, pass the ball and pass the ball in uh, chunks from time to time. So if you were happy that Michigan is now in officially the college football playoff and is back to back Big Ten champions, give me a go blue in the comments. Head down there and go ahead and type go blue. While you're down there, I'm going to let an ad play here. We've got to pay the bill. So check out this ad from our sponsor, Fetch. Scroll back up, ad should be over in just about 30 seconds, 40 seconds or so. Make sure you stick around for the ad and stick around for the rest of today's show. I did want to tell you about today's sponsor of the Michigan Football Report. It is brought to you 
by Fetch. Fetch is a super easy to use and a free app that lets you earn rewards on literally anything you buy. Scan any physical receipt or e-receipt and you will earn points for your purchases. And the process only takes seconds. You don't have to worry about where the receipt is from or what's on it. So let me show you how simple it is as we pull my phone up here on the screen, folks. All you do is open up the Fetch app, you press the orange camera button and snap a photo of your receipt, and you hit submit, and you'll see that confetti pop up that'll kind of come up here on the screen. So as we're doing here in the studio, you take a picture of your receipt, it scans it, it says date, time, location, Boom, you hit that blue submit button in the bottom right corner and the confetti starts popping. It tells you that you have earned points for the, that receipt. It's a very simple process. You can click on the e-receipt function, folks, and connect your Amazon account uh, and your email address to get credit and points for your online purchases. You can then redeem those points for gift cards at places like Amazon, Starbucks, or any of hundreds of retailers and restaurants available through Fetch. Fetch is available on iPhone and Android. Use our link right down there you see it at the bottom of the screen it's chatsports.com slash fetch earn and enter promo code chat reminder there promo code chat and earn 5,000 bonus points when you sign up that's the equivalent of a five dollar gift card so go to chatsports.com slash fetch download the fetch app for iphone or android use that promo code chat right at sign up you get 5,000 points it's a free app and this 5,000 points is only available for a limited time so get started now chatsports.com slash fetch promo code is uh chat down in the comments and the description of today's video go ahead and click on it use that promo code chat for 5,000 bonus points how about Kalel Mullings today, folks, as you uh, hopefully sat through that ad, uh, that ad from today's partner, Fetch. Kalel Mullings, uh, we saw him with the pass against Ohio State. Uh, we saw him get in there and was stopped on a fourth down against Ohio State. But he ended up with eight carries for 26 yards, but two kind of two important touchdowns. And what he's bringing to this offense now is – uh, something that they haven't really had this year, right? It's missing since Hassan Haskins is not a member of this team anymore, which is a um, a running back who can get the yards when they are needed on third and one, third and two, fourth and one. And that's what Kalel Mullings is bringing to the table, as I said, eight carries, 26 yards, those two touchdowns. Um, and you saw that last drive, right? When Michigan scored on that last drive uh, to get up and go to you know score 43 points in the day, it was because of Kalel Mullings. Most of his carries, many of his carries there, most important carries, I think, were on that final drive, including the touchdown. But he also had uh, a big carry to get a first down, and he was a difference maker today. Was in there at linebacker, of course, was in there at running back. What a day, what a player for him. Uh, shout out to Kalel Mullings. Um, Purdue's passing game was offense. As I said, was awesome. As I said, Aiden O'Connell, 32 uh, of 47 on the day, 366 yards, but... No touchdown passes, and I think some credit needs to go to Michigan's red zone offense. Big time credit to Michigan's red zone offense because with 366 yards, he had two picks, no touchdowns. Purdue did have one touchdown rushing, rushing early on, but we forced their kicker uh, to have what he have. Um, poof, I have to look back down what he had um, kicking. Five field goals, five of five field goals. So the Boymakers, 22 points, 15 of them came on field goals. They can only muster one touchdown. So despite giving up 360, uh, 366 yards, 32 of 47 passing to uh, Aiden O'Connell, who, by the way, was dealing with the death of his brother less than two weeks ago. Uh, he had himself a day. He balled out, but uh, Michigan was able to do what they did against Ohio State, which was locked down in the red zone. And I give a ton of credit to Michigan's defensive coaching. Um, obviously, Jesse Minter, Jim Harbaugh, uh, et cetera. The Purdue passing game, it was awesome, but Michigan did what they needed to do, did not let them score when it came down to uh, crunch time or in the red zone. Purdue, five field goals, eight in uh, eight no count, zero passing touchdowns. But I don't know from you guys, uh, who do you think Michigan's going to play in the college football playoff semifinals? Uh, the, it'll be announced tomorrow, uh, just after noon Eastern. Let me know who they th you think they will play. Not who they should play, who, who they will play. I think they will play uh, TCU, but let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Um, as I mentioned, what we saw tonight was something pretty cool because it means that I think in a lot of ways the future is bright for this team uh, next year, hopefully the year after that, right? And, and, and from there, I think Michigan's got sophomores and freshmen superstars all over the field. Colston Loveland, Diamond Edwards, 
Those guys are freshmen. Sophomore is, uh, is Edwards. J.J. McCarthy is a sophomore. Um, haven't seen any wide receivers step up that are freshman or sophomore this year. But, you know, I think we will see some better play as we go on with, uh, with you know, into spring football, into next year. On defense, um, you know, is Will Johnson the best player on your team? Mason Graham next year, what do you expect from him? Those Both guys are going to be probably freshman All-Americans. Um, Derek Moore, right? Um, lots of talent, big time talent from this team on uh, on the underclassmen side, and I'm just absurdly excited. You've got three or four guys on offense, three or four guys on defense that I think you can guarantee are all Big Ten players next year or the year after, um, and maybe quite a few of them all all American level players as soon as next season. Um, as an offense today, I think Michigan was a little bit boring, um, a little bit uncreative. Uh, I didn't see anything passing wise outside of a couple plays from JJ McCarthy, but he made a few really strong plays with his feet where he scrambled out, hit um, you know uh, hit a couple wide receivers. Obviously, hit Luke Schoonmaker uh, for a touchdown. Hit Ronnie Bell deep down the field once or twice. Um, but there were a few weird plays from him. Uh, Ronnie Bell you know, a foot or two over his hands. Roman Wilson threw that pass that was way low where Roman Wilson was wide open. Uh, McCarthy on the day, McClellan's biggest stats, 11 of 17. So that's actually less than I thought he threw the ball for 161. Did have three touchdowns again, uh, but Michigan did most of their damage on the ground. Four touchdowns on the day. Um, pretty creative play, by the way, in that, in that two-point conversion where they had you know the entire line shift to the left, and then J.J. rolled out to, uh, to the right side and hit Schoonmaker in the end zone for a touchdown. So uh, Diamond Edwards on the day, 25 carries, 185. I mean, he had like 35, 40 yards, something like that at halftime, so 150 after halftime. Uh, J.J. had five carries for 14 yards. Wide receivers, Ronnie Bell, five catches for 67 yards. Schoonmaker, three for 56 and a touchdown. Ronnie had a touchdown. Colson Loveland, that one catch for a touchdown, 25 yards. Cornelius Johnson, one catch, nine. And Diamond Edwards also had one catch for nine. But I think Michigan's becoming tight end U. I mean, look, Colson Loveland with that touchdown early. Michigan's third string tight end is turning into, I think, a future superstar. Luke Schoonmaker, Eric All could be back. Now, we did find out that Schoonmaker is uh, is not going to be back this year. So Eric All, most likely back. And uh, and Colson Loveland are going to make a hell of a tight end combo next season. Um, shout out to Jalen Harrell. Two sacks for Jalen Harrell. Um, he was all over the place all day. Those two sacks early were awesome. And he was a threat to the quarterback all day long. Look at the defense. Just kind of walking through some stats here. Um, 15 tackles for Jordan, Jordan, uh, Junior Colson, as I said. Um, Rod Moore, 14 tackles. Mike Barrett, 10 tackles. What a uh, game for all three of those guys. Makari Page had a nice game. Jermaine Green uh, had a couple of plays, I mean, that he could have done better, I think. But he all, all in had a good game. But um, you know, four tackles, so nothing to, uh, to call him a mom about. One pass breakup, and DJ Turner also with uh, two pass breakups and four tackles on the day. All right, guys, as we're going to wrap up today's show, just want to once again let you guys know we will be uh, live tomorrow, 11.45 p.m. Eastern, for about an hour and a half, so make sure you guys join. And here's the question. Will Michigan win the national championship? If you think it is yes, go ahead and comment yes below. If you think it's no, delete YouTube off your phone, off your computer, because Michigan is going all the way. So go, go down and give me a yes in the comments. All right, I'll be live, as I said, tomorrow morning, folks. It is the Michigan Football Report by Chat Sports. I'm your host, James Yoder. So I see you tomorrow morning, 11.45 p.m. Eastern for the College Ball Playoff Top 25. Go Blue.